What's up, what's up? I'm Brand Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with no labels necessary. Mike tried to get away from me, but here we are. Catch us every Tuesday, every Thursday on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you listen to your podcast and similar shows. If you don't know who we are, Sean, Corey, we are the co-founders of Contra Brand Agency. It's a music marketing agency that helps artists get lit from ground up, and we work with the major labels. But here today, we're here to just talk about marketing and branding and business because that's how we do it. We, we, we have fun talking about those topics. And today's episode, good Lord, do we have some fun to talk about. It's probably a lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so I want to just kick it off like this. If Jay Z told you to quit your job, would you do it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I would assume that, that he 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 either sees a vision or there's a plan. Like you know, mm. some compensation is coming pretty soon. Mm. That's what I would think. Man, nobody's just telling you to quit their job, other than Beyonce. You know what I'm saying? Unless they got a plan for you. Okay. okay. Or they see the vision in you. This this relates to the top the first topic. By the way, <laughs> we gonna we gonna get there. But hold up, I got it. Before we even get to that first topic, why would you quit so soon? Like, are, are you? This all right. What what are the circumstances? You're just gonna believe him? Like, what if you're not even working with him and he just like, you know, I don't know. He <laughs> he sees you in pass and y'all have a short conversation, he just still goes, You should quit that job. It depends on what we what we talk about. Like if it's just like I'm a cashier and he's like, Man, like what you wanna do in life? I'm like, Oh, I wanna be a video game designer. He's like, Oh, you should quit your job. I'm like, nah, you know what I'm saying? I can't. I can't. <laughs> Can't take your word on that. But if I'm like, you know, I had a game developed and maybe he played it or something, it was like, oh, this shit fire. You should quit your job. Okay. Maybe, you know? Okay. Depends on how much context he has around the thing I'm trying to do outside the job. Fair fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Okay. I ain't know you just gonna <laughs> hop. <laughs> and I'd be like, yo, Jay, you know what I'm saying? My, you know, it, my living expense is only about three to five K a month, man. Can you loan me about 30K to get me through the next six months? <laughs> just in case. Hey, there we there we go. That's that's a good question right there. So I I want to go ahead and play this first topic, and then y'all still that element from my career that I think that I think stunted me because it also painted this picture that I was already established. Right? Mm -hmm. We didn't have any. We had three records recorded when we did that. We didn't have any people were all these different outlets were hitting Jana up. Jana Fleischman, shout out to Jana. Yeah. Um, shout out to Jana Fleischman. Like she teamwork, miss teamwork, make the dream work. Yeah, she's mm. she's she's a beast. That's where I got love that from her. Fifteen years ago, love that her. was a model. And and people, all these different outlets were hitting her up for interviews, and she would ask us like, you know, do you want to do this? Like, do and I'm like, I don't really have anything to say. I haven't recorded any music. I don't know what my music sounds like. I don't know when it when anything and is coming being out. And you rebellious about the type of music. And I don't know do. what. So, so, and here's the thing. That was her way too. She, she and I was like, like, I don't, I don't have, know what I don't to know say. What to tell I don't people. know what to do. I know they were sitting up there like. All right, all right. So, Jacory, do you know the moment that they're talking about? No, I don't. All right, all right. So, what happened was she ended up performing on stage um, in place of Alicia Keys. Oh, shit. Okay. And she got a major, major look. I forgot what the uh, event um, was. Uh, I think maybe Alicia was, she was, maybe it was a show. I have to go back and check. But basically, Alicia Keys had this slot. So there's a highly, highly visible slot. This is when Alicia Keys was like hot? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Not brand new Alicia, but like still hot Alicia, yeah. mid 2000s. I'm here, right? Alicia. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe early 2010s. But, and she performed in her slot. And because of that slot, obviously highly visible. And she's a beast of an artist in terms of like singing and all that. So the look was crazy. Yeah. What happens after that? By the way, Jay Z did <laughs> tell her to quit her job because he he was got, she was up under him and didn't um and um like Jay Z didn't actually know that she had a job. Like you just assume damn near like wait wait you got a job. He had hit her up and said like, oh yeah come out I think to this show to actually do this performance and. You're like, wait, what? She was like, yeah, I'm at my regular job. He's like, nah, you got to quit. You got to quit that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? And I, I feel that. All right, right? That does make yeah, sense, I right? Feel that, it does yeah. make sense. <laughs> so she gets this highly visible slot. She performs her ass off. And some many people are aware of the Jay-Z and the um, Beyonce-ish like, connection to vicinity, at least more industry people. And because of that visibility, but now people are like, yo, what's next? All right, what do yeah. you do? They want to talk about this artist who just performed in this highly visible slot. So she's talking about here how I have all these interviews like set or the demand for them to be set. 
people like Angie Martinez following her overnight. I don't know if y'all know who she is, but she's a goat in this radio world. All these interviews trying to um, be had with her, yet she don't even know what the hell she's going to say. Got nothing out. She don't have no music out. <laughs> she doesn't have any way to capitalize off of this. I think she's, she just said in that clip, like either they had three songs possibly ready or only three songs out. I don't, I miss uh, what, what she said. But either way it goes, this brings up the, the idea of popping too early. Yeah. No, that makes me think about what? Going, going viral today. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. Because this is pre like internet the way we have it today yeah, that or was social the viral, media. That was right? the viral of that time. That was yeah. 100% yeah. the viral of that time. So <laughs> this is why when people say, can I pop too early? This is what it looks like. Too early isn't necessarily like, oh, you should pop before one song, two songs, three songs, five songs, a full album. Like, it's not that specific because I believe you really can capitalize off of like any moment, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's more about having an infrastructure and a plan. And when you're where she was, like, that's too, that's when you call too early, right? Not, oh, I only recorded one song. And this song happened to go viral. I believe even that is doable. If you got a studio, you can get a, you know you can get that turnaround happening. Yeah. When it's too early, like way, 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 way too early, undisputedly too early, is she didn't even have a vision for herself yet. Yeah. She didn't know what her sound was, right? Like that's a problem. Like, oh, we got to record some more music. That is a problem. Yeah. Right? It's a challenge. Especially about that. Right? That's a, that's a challenge. But that is a problem, bro. Like, yeah. I don't know, even know how the fuck I'm going to sound. What am I going to say on these interviews? Because I don't have a vision for myself. So I can't give you when they ask more. I might could talk about my background because that just is what it is. Like, oh, I used to, I'm from this place and, and that place. And I went to college or whatever. Like, you could talk about that. But you can't give anybody a sensitive vision for who you are and Honestly, many artists decide how they want to be in interviews, mm -hmm. right? But that also relates to their vision. Do I want to be bubbly, have this personality? Do I want to be laid back and chill? Because let's keep it real. Many people have both, like multiple sides of themselves. And you kind of pick what side that you want to show in your interviews at one given point of time. Yeah, so she doesn't get yeah. to think of through any of this stuff. Yeah, you got the demand of the world on you right now. And that shit ain't gonna last. It's like, oh, after yeah, I got a month to figure out who I want to be, which isn't even realistic. But let's say I did that. After that month, that moment's passed. They don't want to interview you just like that. Yeah, like we're not gonna come back and say, oh yeah, that was that girl who had that one performance and one little moment. So it's such a challenge, like to like be visible and then not be able to capitalize off of it. And it makes me think about when. Tink, you you know Tink, right? Yeah, the singer. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Like, so you remember when Timberland, <laughs> when he put out, he, he was on Breakfast Club and he played that that joint with Rick Ross and, and Tink, and he wasn't supposed to do it. Rick Ross was upset with him. Nah, oh, nah yeah, I missed yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nah. Like it was, <laughs> uh, Timberland put Tink in a, in between the rock and a hard place. <laughs> it, it, it was thick for a second. Um, but yeah, he played because he was so excited about Tink and like, yo, I got this new artist, da da da. And he even played, it, maybe it was a remix to his regular song, or maybe it was a song that came, didn't come out. I think it was more of a remix, but yeah. Yeah, because the Tink and Rick Ross song, song uh, Rick Ross song, it was hard, crazy. bro. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. hard. <laughs> and DJ Envy pulled that old school DJ trick, let me get the exclusive yeah. type. <laughs> you got to blame Timberland. You can't, like, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, like, he should have done better. But, but yeah, she basically said, she didn't take advantage. Basically, Timberland said she wasn't taking advantage of a lot of opportunities that came with him and certain visibility because she wanted to give herself space and time to mature. All right. And figure things out. And that's crazy to hear from an artist. Yeah. Who doesn't like how few people are that confident in where they're going, their own career and their ability to the point that they would turn that stuff down, especially at the age she was at that time. She was probably like 19 or 20. I might be off by a couple yeah. of years, but she was young to do that too. Yeah, but is it is it is it confidence or is it is it fear? You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times I feel like it's it's more of the fear of like what's gonna kind of come with that. Knowing you're not ready, 
Because I, I, and what makes me knowing think, you're not ready though yeah. is one. It's one thing to know you're not ready and to be afraid. I yeah. think I think there's a nuance there. Yeah, but like the, the audience doesn't know. And what what's making me think of it is um, I, I remember in like one of the business masterminds we was at when the speaker was making the argument that like if you're scaling the company, actually no, it wasn't a mastermind. It might have been a YouTube video, like an Alex Hermosa video or something. But it was making he was making the argument that like if you're scaling really quickly, right, like you don't stop the scale. You just figure out how to catch up to it and just let shit break in the process while yes. you figure out yes. how to catch up to it, right? And so to me, it applies to this situation. It's like, do we slow this down because you as an artist aren't ready for it? Do we throw you into this shit, force you to get as ready as you can, and then learn what we learn from that, and then figure it out how to make it better the next time? You know, so like, that's why I, I become conflicted with it. Like, I think it's dope that she has the insight to be yeah. like, I don't think I'm ready. But then it's like, well, honestly, you never really will be ready because all this shit going to be new to you for at least the next couple of years, you know? All right. So that's where I call out the differences between a human product and a product to be sold, Fair. right? Like, I think <laughs> there is some aspect, just even as humans, we know, like, yo, you got to get in the game at some point, period, yeah. Yeah. right? So. If it's more a fear and I'm just being afraid to get in the game, but technically you do have it in you and you are ready, that's a problem. And you have to keep things moving and stretch and adjust. Cool. But to a certain extent, with a human product, there's a certain amount of development that's just not going to happen. Yeah. All right. It's just not going to happen just because opportunities came and sped up. Because it's if anything, I might be able to better handle the scenario right better i might now know how to handle media and experience media and see all these spaces and games and play that game better but i won't i won't be able to increase the speed in which i improve the product that's the problem yep. you know what i'm saying like yeah. i can't all of a sudden just have an experience it's like you ever heard somebody say like it'll be a great singer or whatever. They'd be like thirteen or whatever, and they were like, "Oh man!" Now when you go through some life, yeah, you woo, yeah, you, know, <laughs> you, you got that voice, but you don't have that soul that come from that place that you can only get when you get that shit happening to you. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the type of thing that we're dealing with for artists when our business. Okay, let's say sales, because that's basically what we, what it comes down to: sales and the ability to fulfill and the product itself. Yeah, the product itself doesn't really change that much, yeah. right? You have to just figure out how do I fulfill, distribute, deliver, right? So those are different problems to solve, right? And get behind, and you and I agree. Scale, 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 scale. Now, how the fuck can we fulfill this shit? Yeah. This shit. But when it comes to, and even businesses have problems. Like, I had that problem with Popeyes when they did that chicken sandwich. Oh, uh, you couldn't get one? No, I got one. Oh, okay. Right? I got one, that shit was delicious. <laughs> It was delicious. <laughs> then they ran out. <laughs> the next one was suspicious. <laughs> I said, this ain't the same shit. <laughs> Y'all, and I know what happened. They dropped that thing. They're like, oh yeah, you know, we're gonna do this little chicken sandwich. We're gonna have a war. Maybe it's a test, or maybe it's or maybe we actually are gonna come out with it. But I felt like it was a little bit of limited in its expectation yeah, first time around, right? Yeah. This young goes viral. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's lines wrapped around the building you know this is something like and this couldn't happen like a year later in COVID right yeah. <laughs> this had to be like 2019 everybody's like like this is the thing this is the talk of the town I, I can't get wish for a better scenario people are comparing it to Chick-fil-A many people saying mine is better than Chick-fil-A run out people can't get it and then what happened they had to stop mm, yeah why did they have to stop though why would you stop when like why would you stop when everything is hot when it's in high demand. Nobody had to stop. Because they had their own version of an artist that you can't speed up. The, the goddamn chicken sandwich. The goddamn chickens, <laughs> bro. You can't make them hoes. <laughs> you can't speed up life, bro, unless you start going to get the other stuff. The other stuff, that's going to ruin the quality too much. So now you got all these suppliers you got <laughs> agreements with already. Right? Yeah. And... Some of these suppliers are already locked down with their agreements with other people. Yeah. So what happens, eventually you find somebody and, and what, you come back. At first, I think the last time I've had it, it's improved back from, so it was great. 
came right back. This ain't the same shit, bro. This tastes closer to that stuff I would eat in school. And then now it's trending back towards the right thing, right? You know, two years later, you know, yeah. the chickens have grown a little bit, right? But that's the problem that you that you deal with. That's <laughs> business is all sell, fulfill, sell, fulfill, sell, fulfill. So anytime you bring in that natural human living element, dog. Yeah, that, that's fair. I think about like clients we had that we helped go viral and it's that first time going viral. Like it's a lot to deal with, you know what I'm yes. saying? And uh, the I mean, mentally, and yeah, and even bring about the the Bridget Kelly, like I, the the difference I see versus when she went through it, like you said, like the one there was no music product uh, there, and it's much more expensive to make music back then. So it's not like you just you know go to your your bedroom that they knock out like a quick album or some shit, you know, and have it ready in two weeks. And then on top of that, today I think the advantage that artists of today have is they can just learn how to do that shit on their socials, right? Like you can learn how to get over a lot of the initial fears or stuff like that by just like going live and talking to your fans, right? You go viral today, you do six live streams over the next two weeks. By the end of that, you'll be comfortable talking yeah. to random people. You know what I'm saying? Like you'll yeah. you'll feel a little bit better. So I think artists, they have more outlets to get the experience faster, whether yeah. they look at it that way or not. Mm, so that's why I, I would say that. even in that, it's like, yeah, the there's that human element of, of like, this is just experiences and, you know, it probably takes us all like a good one to three months after having the experience to really process and learn how to deal with it. That's, that's what I think. But my argument is you're going to go through that shit one way or another, either now <laughs> or shit with music, maybe never again. You know what I'm saying? So oh, yeah. it's, so yeah. it's, so it's do again. I not go through the experience because I feel like I'm not ready? And like you said with Tink, like, do I feel confident enough in myself to think, like, I'm going to get this opportunity again in a year, two years from now, three years from now? Or do you say, fuck it, I'm just going to deal with it. Maybe my mental and physical health declines a little bit, but I know I just got to make it through X amount of period and then learn from what I learned from it. You know what I'm saying? Move how I can move after it. And I, at least I don't have to risk this never happening again. At least I can say I went through it. And so yeah. I feel like those are the options you come down to when something like that happens. I understand the, the first option. I feel like everyone should do it. Second option. <laughs> I I think from what I understand and saw, I think in Tink's situation, I can see why it made sense to go her route. Um Bridget Kelly's situation, I'd probably based on how things are wrong, I'd probably just run it up in that moment. That's what right? I'm saying. So and, and actually real quick too, yeah. back then you could get away. For a, a with like one single for a longer period of time, you could, yeah. You could. So she could just knocked out one and been good for like six months. You know what yeah, saying, at least. <laughs> yeah. See, I think the problem though still therein lies what you figure out. It's it's that gift that comes with artists that also creates that problem. Yeah. Right, and then you have to make a decision, a business decision. I know that you don't know who you are yet because I don't think it was about fear of speaking with people in mental health because that conversation wasn't as trendy right now. Even that was there, it wouldn't have been like a thought, yeah, right? Yeah. I think it was largely, literally, but what do I talk about? Yeah, what do I sell? I don't have any, it, I don't have a product. Yeah. That's, <laughs> like that's a whole other problem. Yeah. Like we talk about fulfillment and then having issues and scaling. I don't even have a product yet. I don't know who I am. I don't. I haven't created enough of it. And then now you talk about blowing up because you did a feature, because you did a song. Like we have artists who have unfinished songs blow up, right? Or they have a teaser uh, or a cover blow up, right? And now you got to figure out how do I finish that out? An unfinished song is good because it's like, oh, at least all I got to do is finish the song. Yeah. Right? Now, how fast you can do that is a problem, like, or not. But the thing that comes with artists, man, is... Do you are you comfortable with thinking on a longer time span and saying, "Hey, I'm a pop in this specific space that I don't necessarily want to do for my career. Maybe I want to incorporate some rock neo soul elements. That was something that she was talking about into my stuff and figure out how to fuse them cleanly. But right now, this is some straight Alicia Keys shit, mm -hmm. right?" I'm in that spot and coming up down that path and I'm just going to go as big as I can down that path. And then 
hey, man, I'm rich. I'm winning. I got a fan base. You know, things are going good. Then I'm going to try to hit them with this fusion and figure myself out and see if I could take them there. That's not a bad look. That's actually yeah. oftentimes the best way to do it. Like the mo- the highest probability of taking something unique and introducing it to a marketplace, especially music, is that route, right? Yeah, that's what all the uh, SoundCloud rappers did. <laughs> All, all of them. All of the biggest ones, bro. That's what they did. They capped in that space, and then as soon as they got the base, they all flipped the different shit. Exactly. Yeah. But many artists aren't comfortable with that idea. Yeah. Right? It makes it maybe feel like more of a job or creatively restricting, which oftentimes a job might do for them if it's not just whatever I want and where I bro, whatever I'm feeling and the inspiration that comes from it. Right? That, but that is the job of the industry you are an entertainer yeah right and it is a job itself so i get that that you might want to delay everything based on the development of yourself and the sound and it being perfect so and i so i could 100 percent get that route but on the side of understanding how difficult it is to get a moment exactly a for real moment exactly momentum that shit that you cannot buy I always tell artists you cannot buy momentum record labels cannot buy momentum no that's why they find momentum <laughs> and then try to get ownership of that momentum yeah. because i could put a meal behind something and it could not stick yeah i can't force it i can inc- i can increase the likelihood by putting more money into it more resources but if it don't go it don't go that's the thing about this music shit so understanding that how hard that is to do yeah i would probably try to advise personally yeah. let's stick with this thing all right and just cap and get your visibility and look at, at at worst you made some money and you dig you know you got some success you got a cool story you know to tell I mean? your friends and family you know what yeah. I'm remember that time i was viral yeah. for like five months you know that clip <laughs> when um ray daniels was like Hey, nigga, if you want to rap, then rap. Yeah. Like, this is business, the music business. But if you want to rap, go out on a motherfucking corner, then rap. Like, that whole thing. Yeah. Right? Now, I look at it that way, too. Right? If you want to be in this music business, right, just the business of things, of course, ideally, you have your perfect sound that you want for yourself. And then you can capitalize off of that. That's the artist ideal situation. Exploit who you are to the 100%. But... The other situation is, look, if you really are doing this as an artist, artist, and it's because you want to do do it in that way, maybe you just creating music for yourself and putting it, you know, on the <laughs> on the USB drive, the terror, <laughs> like whatever that is, that should be good, right? Or you can perform for small audiences, or you build this big fan base and it's not gonna hit on a pop scale or your main fan base, but you know, you want to do this intimate show, you can still get that off. Yeah. Right. Matter of fact, you have more space to get that off because you have a, you know, a better life. Right. You have more freedom (laughs) in your life. Right. But it comes from you doing this thing. So sometimes my personal issue that comes with artists and this goes from either popping with a sound that's not yours or not the ideal sound like that you want to be at. I I get like not going like, oh, I'm going to go country, even though I'm a hip hop artist. And and I get that type of extremity, but. Not popping, whether it's popping with an imperfect sound by your um, nature or not becoming a YouTuber or uh, any kind of content creator popping in any kind of way. Mm -hmm. My issue with that is right now your alternative is this job that you hate. What is your other path? I don't understand. Like, well, why don't I at least have some level of freedom, especially like, oh, you're funny. People love like DC Young Fly is one of those dudes. He can rap and sing his ass off. I was forgetting he might. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Was like, he what? was doing what? that early yeah. on, but yeah. oh, this music got popping. I mean, not this music. This comedy. Uh, this comedy got popping. You know, and maybe the way things are going, maybe the full breadth of the music isn't meant for him. You know what I mean? Like, God meant this comedy thing for him, or maybe he brings it back and he does something official. Jamie Foxx was one of those dudes. Yeah. Always wanted yeah. to do like the music was his first verse. But acting worked out. Acting worked out the yeah. way it is. And he got it, get it how you live. And I gave him resources and things. He would strategically throw all them parties with Kanye and Jay-Z and Missy, all them stories he tells, like, and bring all those people in around and had a studio in his house and try to get some of them to record with him and get, do a little experience. He would strategically do that. And that he could and he could only do that because of his resources that he got mm-hmm. from being an actor, the clout he got from being an actor and comedian. 
and and then worked himself way uh, back into music yeah. that way. Yeah. Right. And I, his music career still isn't technically anywhere near his acting career or the height of what his comedy is. It's not, but yeah. it's so high. Yeah. yeah. That, and that's what yeah. makes Jamie Foxx like one of the, like, just. I'm like a Jamie guy, his, bro. Yeah, that's, right. that's what makes him a fucking alien. Because his music <laughs> career is very, very high <laughs> on a general scale. Matter of fact, let's, just to know, let's see what his monthly listeners are. Bro, I feel like. That'd be interesting. I feel like it's at least seven million. You think at least seven million? At least seven. Yeah, that's. He got, he got some hits. Yeah, that's, that's a legit number. Let's see. Spotify. Uh, Jamie. Is he popping up? Let me know when he pops up. Oh, there we go. Jamie has uh, 3.9. 3.9. Okay. No. But when's the last time he dropped something? She made like, what, three years ago? Like, man? seriously. Three, three, four years ago? Maybe. And, and we know how little time he's had. He's had like that hot, hot moment already. So, yeah, Slow Jam, City Jewelers, Blame It. Yeah. So, okay. how many streams does Blame It have? Oh, you know what? This don't count, though, because his shit was before streaming. Streaming, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so this really don't even count. To have 3.9. And not really even have a moment and push and drop shit after streaming like that. And that shit coming from probably majority of these three songs. That's that's crazy. Yeah, that's yeah. So his numbers yeah. are still stupid. Yeah. His numbers are, are are still stupid, but you have to judge it on that scale. This is what pre streaming when you gotta look in terms of looking at it seriously. Um but yeah, okay, I see he dropped something in relation to that movie. I haven't watched that vampire movie yet. Have you have you watched it? No, man. My uh my grandma like, told me it wasn't that great, and I, 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 I trust my grandmother's opinion when it comes to movies. It looks like a good bad movie, or like a like you know you put that shit on during the daytime while you like I don't know cooking or <laughs> or just doing something else at the same time. But but yeah, the moments are so hard to come by. You got to cap right yeah. when they come. Yeah, right? like how many how many times yes. have we we seen that with clients where we were like we wish you would just power through this shit. Yes. I can think of at least like five different instances. Yep. And th- that becomes my thing with it is, like I was saying earlier, all of this is new. So it's going to be a long time before you experience these things and, and really feel comfortable with it. And so it's, I look at it like, do you, are you okay with learning on the fly? Because I think a lot of times artists kind of have this idea in their head where it's like, hey, like I, I need to be perfect. I need to be this way mm-hmm. for me to really take advantage of it. But it's like, one, you don't know if that shit, that shit's perfect to you, but you don't know if it's going to hit the way you, you need to hit. And then yeah. two, bro, just figure this shit out now. And if you're right, then you'll be better for the situation you're planning on. And if you're wrong and you fall out the game, then it didn't matter anyway. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you were, you, either yeah. way, it didn't matter. You got a cool story to tell and you, you can kind of keep it pushing. Yeah. And so that becomes my thing with it because whenever we would have clients say that to us, that will always be the perspective that comes. Like, oh, like, this is cool. I'm having this moment. Let me get this right before we really cap. And we're like, yeah. when is that going to happen? Oh, it should be about a month. Like a month? Psh, yeah. But you might have five days, to be honest with you. you exactly. Know <laughs> like Facts. you might have five days max. A week from now, Kanye gonna say some shit. The media are gonna <laughs> turn that way. And just like that, we don't forget about you and don't care anymore. Bro, I the, the last thing I'll say on that is still it requires discernment. And this is what yeah. what why the value of like a great manager and just team around you comes in handy. Because how do you identify that moment that you can't get, that you can't buy versus this is just an opportunity, right? Because all the artists that we know, successful and unsuccessful, have probably turned something down. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Right? But and, and the very, very successful have turned many things down. So yeah. it's not like you're eating up every single opportunity that comes and say, oh, I'll never get this opportunity again. Timing is, it really matters. And maybe I need to do it not off of this random thing that just popped because of my relationship, I need to do it because I'm about to come out with a project and bring attention to it, right? So I'm not gonna do this radio interview this week. I'm gonna do it six months from now when I actually have something to talk about. Like little things like that, they matter. And figuring and being able to discern, is this a moment moment or is this, yeah, like I said, I guess an opportunity. That's the the, the best way. But yeah, um yeah, well, shit, one, so real quick, one of the uh, coldest quotes I heard on something like that was like one of the hardest things about growing as a business is saying no to things that you know could be a good look. Oh hell yeah! You know what I'm saying? You're like, yeah. damn, this shit could, this shit here, but this is moving like this for me. I gotta, I gotta let it go, bro. That's where people mess up, right? Because it's like it's that effort di- distribution and understanding. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah, I could go over here and make this quick hundred k faster than I've made a hundred k before. Or I can take that same effort 
and it might take two times as long and make a meal, mm -hmm. right? An additional meal just in that same space. Mm -hmm. But most people don't have the discipline and long-term thinking to be able to get themselves from like hustle, 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 hustle. Oh, there's an op. Oh, there's an op. Oh, there's an op. But a lot of that comes in from lack of faith yeah. in himself. Like it's like a faith or lack of lack of discipline, lack of or understanding how much work that understanding really that yeah. it actually takes to hit that level, mm -hmm. right? And now that energy you just put over there just extended the time span for this main space that you just left to make that money. Yeah. But, and you keep on going back over there because you're like, oh, I didn't do it yet. Oh, I didn't do it yet. And now you might be, just completely miss that window to ever hit that next level in that first thing you just left because it's taking too long or you beating yourself into like lack of stamina. So yeah, that it's, again, this is why it it it, it is so advantageous to have great advisors and like people around you because how do you know that and recognize that when there's not the person around that can tell you that yeah and it's your right? first time going through and, it and it's your first time going yeah. through it you don't click you you can't sniff with that you know it's, it's, this is part of why we had some problems with like college students working for us remember i was just like oh, yeah. hey bro these people don't live too much life and right now it's i mean they haven't lived enough it's coming easy and they and when we're in that moment like they don't understand, nigga. You can't just make these moments. Yeah. Like I need you to work, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like you up there. Oh, I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna stomp the yard, and then I'm gonna like do this, and I'm gonna go on my dates and all that. Da, da, da. You don't understand? No, this is double down time because once we get to that next level, we're on that next level, and then sometimes it's five levels, ten levels that you can go up in that moment. And once you're there, you're there. Yeah. So you put in that work. You might shit not go to sleep for a couple of weeks or whatever, you know? But then once you're there, you're there, it's not gonna wait on you, Yeah, you know? So that's, again, that's part of, you put that, even if it's a business opportunity, you turn this shit down because of what's in front of you and the opportunity you have. Then some people don't have an opportunity that is worth doing that for though. And that I understand, that's a, yeah. whole, no, a whole nother game. But um, like and subscribe, people, like and subscribe. Please do it uh, and, and, and put anything in the comments if y'all, if something y'all like what we said, if it's something you disagree with, then go ahead and put it there, put it there and I can see if I disagree with it, with what you're saying, <laughs> you know, your disagreement. But yeah, for real, like, uh, comment, and if you're new to this, subscribe. We really appreciate y'all. Um, and let's get to the next topic. Let's do it. All right. So this next topic, oh boy. Now, Jacore, you brought this one up. I brought it up. Yeah, I don't know what we, we're about to we, talk about. Are you sure you know? It's finally here. Are you sure you know? I think I know. Mm, let's see. You didn't expect this one. Uh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> False alarm. False alarm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what's the reality? Can your team mess up your life? Can your team mess up your life? Of your manager, your PR person? But that's just one of the topics that this is going to like bring us to. But Sweetie had a major moment or opportunity with DJ Vlad to do an interview. Mm -hmm. But DJ Vlad said, somebody on her team said, nah. Now, I got my opinion about this. I want to see what your opinion is. But let's just break down exactly what happened. So we're just going to straight up read this Vlad, DJ Vlad. Y'all know who he is, Vlad TV, millions of subscribers. Definitely covers the music and hip-hop community especially. And he said, on Thursday, I tweeted about Sweetie turning down a Vlad TV interview and how I felt her mixtape sales would have been higher if she had done it. That tweet went viral. Sweetie publicly responded to my tweet and cleared up a few things. So let me tell the whole story with receipts. Let's get into it. So here's his tweet. It says... If Sweetie did a Vlad TV interview, she would have easily done 10x her first week sales, which was 2,000 copies. At her level, that is disappointing. We actually reached out through one of our people and were told she won't do Vlad. Her loss. That's what Vlad tweeted. All right. And then Tweety. Oh, actually, let me finish the rest of what Vlad said. When, when I was told Sweetie didn't want to do the interview with us, which originated from her label, Warner Brothers, publicist Aisha White. I assumed that this was Sweetie's choice, but Sweetie replied and said she was a big fan of Vlad TV and denied that she even knew about the request. Here's Sweetie's tweet. 
actually i've been a big fan and screen recorded one of my favorite episodes here's one of them dates on the top so if anyone reached out quote unquote it wasn't me or my team bj vlad happy thanksgiving all right vlad says sweetie turned it down sweetie said it wasn't me that was my team let's let's go deeper into this ah <sighs> first of all that's a wild claim a 10x 10x that's crazy 10x <laughs> is the claim 10x is the claim so let, yeah, let's just stop right there for before you finish <laughs> this this last thing all right 10x yeah off of an interview with you that's what i'm saying that's a wild claim bro that's to a me wild claim. to me that's full of shit right there yeah, maybe maybe three to five you know you patting yourself on the back right yeah. there you know what i mean that that's full of shit but i actually got some other thoughts on that i want to i want to i want to finish this before we get <laughs> <laughs> i want to finish this so let's let's do this last bit so when then so we then find out aisha white warner brothers senior vp of publicity doesn't like vlad and would never have any warner brothers artist interview with us these decisions were being made by aisha without ever asking saweetie or the other warner brother artist all right cool so apparently somebody on warner brothers has beef with vlad now, there's been later receipts that have come out that seem to dispute even a uh, direct beef with that. Mm -hmm. I don't think we need to go spend time like actually going through those like word for word. But she um, one of the things that the PR person said was what well, they offer like 10. Now, off, no, Vlad said you could do the interview for 10 grand, right? Yeah, he was going to pay sweet 10K for it. He was going to pay her 10K. Yeah. Oh, I thought they were asking 10K. No, no, course. yeah. He was okay, saying he, he was, was pair. Yeah, pair. Okay, okay. So, by the way, that goes both ways. Y'all should know about these outlets. Many of them, if you're in the right position, actually will pay you for an interview yeah. if you're a good op. But then also many of them, you have to get paid to get on. And so some of these interviews you see with people are actually them paying to get on that platform. Yeah. You know, but let's get back to that 10X, all right? <laughs> and then we'll get to the team. No matter of fact, the team because we talked about a team straight up can mess up your opportunities in the same way we talked about yeah. i think just last episode literally people won't do business with you because of your team members <laughs> some people on your team won't do business with somebody and have beef with somebody that you don't even have beef with and you might even disagree with the beef if you actually knew the whole story but point is it's like, yo, you're messing up the money. You're messing up my opportunities for some personal shit with you. But this is business and you shouldn't be personalizing things in regard to me and making me miss my train just off of some personal stuff to you. Yeah, right? Yeah. That's a real thing that's happening with these teams where I'm like, dang, I bet the artist doesn't even know. Yeah. <laughs> the way this manager is like turning this down. Like if they knew about this, they'd be all down for it. Especially some of the things kind of like, and I've even not, we haven't experienced this to this extent, but you know how Sweetie was like, I'm a fan. I got screen recordings, right? It'll be stuff like, hey, man, I seen this dude in the comments and everything and da da da, like, or we've talked or whatever. But then all of a sudden you're talking to the manager and it's like completely flipped. Yeah, no, they're not really feeling it. Yeah, they're like, not what? really feeling it. It's like, <laughs> no, I think, I think it's you. And you're trying to convince them that that isn't the way to go with the campaign or whatever little detail it is, yeah. right? You know? Um, matter of fact, that artist that, so we had one artist and the artist did not, the artist was basically ready to blow up. She had a decent following, good music, and she was down for the things we pitched for, pitched uh, in the campaign or some of the things we talked about. But talking to this artist and the manager and two other people were on a call. I had the first call with him. So you weren't, you weren't there for that. Oh, but I, I remember oh, telling you about it. <laughs> I was like, yo, I don't think this is going to go because the manager has a completely different agenda than the artist. Uh, I was that. like, this yeah. dude, okay. yeah. he don't make his money in this space. If you hear his background, he's just worried about basic like publishing, seeing, yeah. like that's where he comes from. That's how he knows how to cap. He has the artist so he can cap in that space. Yeah. She wants to be a pop star. He don't care about the pop star shit. I want to cap in this space. Can I get you in these rooms? Can I get you in these rooms? <laughs> can I get you writing? Da da da. Yeah. Having that conflict is an issue. You need to understand not only the ability of base that your manager has. A lot of artists get in agreements just because their manager is connected and, and they've made good money in these spaces and they might even get you 
an op in that space. Oh, if I if I get you some syncs and songwriter opportunities because I come from that easy, like you might have that connection because you saw some game from that art uh, manager beforehand. And I was like, oh yeah, let me let them run the, my full business. Maybe if y'all aren't the, no, not maybe if y'all aren't the same page about the full thing though, then like that's not gonna work out. So I don't know all of the 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 Swede story, but. One, make sure that you and your manager are on the same page. It doesn't mean just because he has sync abilities and all that stuff that he should be your manager, but it also doesn't mean he shouldn't. If the full vision is the same, it's like, oh, yeah, I I got this one area that I've done well in, and now I need to go gain these other areas. Or I got resources that I now need to start flipping these other areas. That's cool. But if I just want to stay in that bag and I don't want to get out of my bag, that might be a problem unless you just want to be in that bag and cap. So. There's that, right? The team truly can limit what you do. But here's the problem when it comes to that the 10x issue to me. How is he going to get it to go up 10x? Man, I'm guessing he's just saying like the publicity from it. But I also don't see his audience fucking with Sweetie like that. That's what makes me not believe it. His audience don't like Sweetie. He has enough of an audience and name rec- and brand recognition to actually get recognition from anybody in the hip hop community mm-hmm. yeah. as far as I'm concerned. I think he could do a Megan interview. He could do a he could do interview with any women in the hip hop and it'd still get a lot of views from it because one, he's really good at understanding how to play it and the, the questions to ask and and you know the team with the titles. He's gonna get a, a certain level of visibility anyway. Yeah. Just because of the algorithm and people checking his stuff out. And third He's also inter- done a good job of like interviewing a lot of different people, different spaces. So you might not see him interview a lot of female hip hop artists, but he's done quite a, f- a few actresses, right? So I might not, I'm, I might like that actress and this 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 female rapper, even though I don't ever see female rappers. So it's like nice mm-hmm. to see him there. So there's a legitimate argument that he has value to bring, right? But how would he actually boost her streams? To the people with the front of the interview going to – that's why I was like 10X as well. Maybe two to three, maybe five max. Ten. This is what I think, bro. This is what I think. This is Vlad. We know the we know what the fuck Tom Vlad is on. He's going to add some Quavo shit. Uh, I get, okay, yeah. Right. Yeah. He's going to really dig into that space. Yeah. It's no way he's going to avoid that because that's just Vlad and also – from his perspective and understanding that business model, shit, why wouldn't I? Yeah. I'm going to, right? So he's going to add some shit like that. And then, you know, I actually never listened to the song, but I know that they say she has some bars for Quavo in, a, you know, in her recent song or whatever. So then bringing more visibility to that moment and maybe try to find other al- moments in the album. So then you're going to have people going to listen just for that. At the most, that's what he could do. Her just being on a platform and not talking about any of that stuff, it definitely would not make that that kind of pop. Yeah, but his audience is, would not like her. <laughs> she they is not, not for his audience. They, bro. She is not for his audience, not at all. Right? Yeah. They, they would def, A lot of them would tear her up. So I think there's a lot of great arguments from a career standpoint why she shouldn't do it. Yeah. Right? Um, but but she said she was down to do it. But she so she didn't down, even feel that way. She yeah. would be down to do it. Yeah. So it could be an instance of the, the the team taking like Vlad's reputation into consideration. You know, he he has a pretty yes. salacious reputation yes. for starting shit, right? But then it's like she already put the narrative out there, so something got started from that. It's like y'all already kicked it up, kicked off the rollout with that. So you can't that can't be the thing that you're afraid of happening. You know what I'm saying? That's true. Because if you do it, you might as well lean into it. Le- do yeah. it. If you put it out there, right. you might as well take it as far as it can go. As far as it if you were scared to take it that far, you should have never put the information right. out there. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, hey, but it, uh, so this is when I go to my branding problems with Swede, though. Do you remember? It was probably like two years ago. I said, Sweetie, and, and Sweetie was not anywhere near popping to the level she has been. It was before she did the track with, uh, uh, Dang, Doja Cat, any of that stuff, like the best friend of it. But remember, I said that Sweetie was better positioned long term than Meg Thee Stallion. I do remember when you and said that. And this is all right, fresh off a of hot girl summer shit popping, going crazy. 
and Sweetie's nowhere near that level of heat. And I knew that would be a weird take to have, <laughs> but there's changes that have occurred since then that <laughs> I feel like she's taken the opportunity away. Yeah, man. Now, <laughs> let me break down what the point was and then why I think she's taking it away. So, Sweetie had the reason her opportunity was higher to me long term is because one, Meg had this over sexualized image. It's still pretty damn sexualized. And look, I understand that I'm a man. I understand that this shit could be clipped up at certain moments with some of the shit I'm about to say and and look, it get tweaked. But I'm saying this, like, I'm talking from brand perception and how shit actually works. Like, at the yeah. end of the day, I don't, I don't give a fuck. Like, it's a difference between, <laughs> oh, this PC stuff that people say and how shit actually works, yeah. right? And the truth is, Meg has had a super sexualized brand and that's great, but it also brings limitations. And that growth from the has also like today's today's um climate actually has further legs for sexualization than there has been in any other like era right yeah so yeah. It's, it's so it's far less limited than it used to be but it's still there right sweetie was not super sexualized at the beginning Sweetie had her natural body at the beginning now Meg has her natural body Meg it, like the stallion is like real life for her right Sweetie had her natural body. Cool. Like, that's what you want to do. Do your thing, boo. But at the end of the day, that's to me is just like a symbolism of many of the things that she's done that have kind of taken her in an interesting direction. Like, I don't know if you remember the whole her twerking shit and people like made it real awkward. Like, mm -hmm. it was a whole meme. Like, why are you twerking? You trying too hard. You know, you're like, they don't feel that she's authentic in many ways. When she started off, it's like, yo, I'm this girl. I went to college. I'm not. You're never going to see me with, like, barely any clothes on. That was, like, shit she was saying at the beginning, mm. right? And with that, Ashley comes a lot of advantages to have this brand as this naturally beautiful girl, like, bad as hell, but not necessarily, you know, you, you show stuff, but you ain't, like, necessarily, like, selling sex outright. Mm -hmm. and your music comes from a different space and place and you're keeping this college girl kind of like as a part of your uh, part of your brand like her brand naturally fit a certain section of girls that weren't being tapped into where she first popped off the, the natural pretty girls <laughs> no i'm not saying not the natural i'm not saying the natural pretty girls right like because that's a pretty girl's love music. But no, but in some way, she represented a girl that you weren't seeing at first, right? You went to college. It was like a little bit more corporate, right? It was like a corporate chick that gets lit. Yeah. That's where she was coming from at first. That's a void to fill. And I've never seen anybody fill that void, actually. Right? You always got the street chicks and you already got the, like, the, I'm a bad bitch. Those are the main two, right? Mm -hmm. Then, of course, you got the, the like, a woman who's, like, truly a rapper, rapper and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. And you respect her for all that, right? But- and we know those don't even, they don't even get the level of visibility that they should. Yeah. But bad bitch, street chicks. Those are like the main archetypes. Archetypes, yeah. right? Yeah. She had the ability to be a corporate chick, right? That gets lit. And that is a bro, them corporate chicks, they really get lit, though. Like, yeah, <laughs> like they they, they yeah. really, if you know them, you know them, man. You know, these the, the, these girls who have a regular life, you know what I mean? But they they love to, to turn up. So she had that space, but it seemed like she leaned towards a brand that already that people never even saw her for and truly thought were uh, was authentic. People are already like, oh yeah, okay, she's cool and all, but she's not like from the streets or like a scammer, like for real, for real, like the mm -hmm. city girls, right? She's not on that shit. Yeah. So there's a level, a, a, a certain sect of like black women, like with more of a hood background or like inclination towards that, they're just like, ah, you try too hard. Mm -hmm. That's just the, see, this is the reality of the brand and, and perception that's out there, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, you're not going to convince them. And your actual background, there's like, it's oh, that's true. You're not that chick, which is fine, right? It's completely fine, right? People already like, was looking at her like, as one of the most like, just like straight up beautiful. And this, and this kind of like, Again, do what you do, do what you want to do, but 
it's kind of the fucked up thing. I got daughters, right? Like, you, you got this, you got, bro, bad as hell women making these changes to their bodies young, mm. right? And I get that there's just pressure, especially in that space in the game, right? And it's just, before it's like, oh, this girl, like, or this person has a problem, they're trying to fix it. It's like, it ain't no problems. Where your problems at? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, especially that young, like, you're like, almost too young to have um, problems. But so I was like, it seems like all these pressures of the game took a whip, made her strip away her things that made her unique. And now she's caught in this place that she can never win fully because, yeah, you, you, you. You got a fake butt or whatever, but you're never gonna be like the thickest, like that type of sexual girl. You had you had the advantage in that other space, right? Yeah, you're you might make music that might do decent in a more hood ish crowd or space, but it's never gonna be. It's never gonna feel like Glorilla. Yeah, you get know what I'm saying. You know what I mean. It's never gonna feel like the city girls. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So you're taking away your advantages, but her aesthetic, her her brand set up the way it was, she was so brand friendly, like corporate fin- friendly, which, so like you can see her easily from like a nightgown, not a nightgown, what's the word? Like a evening gown, oh, evening cocktail, gown. Like, like all yeah. that type of stuff. You, you can see her move more in that world easily the way everything was. Cause again, how do you, ha- like what type of events do corporate chicks have to go to, right? Like you can see her in that world, she fit that perception so then from corporate sponsorships and that things that you can navigate she was she had that ability to touch that space that some of these other women couldn't touch or they couldn't touch as authentically as she could yeah i mean i i, I think there's another big piece to it too that wasn't there then and that Talk is about it. the brand influence of marketing market wasn't as lucrative then as it as it is now so I think mm. the 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 well maybe not You're talking about what 2018 yeah maybe well maybe not not as lucrative but first pop, right? yeah but yeah, she yeah. it wasn't as lucrative well, for yeah, her, no, yeah. right? I'm just trying to get the timeline all right yeah. so 2018 19 and then all right yeah so it's like I think now she's moving in a direction of more so being an influencer who drops music more so than a rapper who does influencer things sometimes like, I feel like probably the last like. Four million of the people that learned about her probably learned about her through brand deals and different influencer things that she's done. Probably not her music. I, I would I would make that argument. And so I think if we're looking at it from her lens, it becomes like, yes, like, do I continue to beat myself into this space that where I am unique and is helping the music go? But then when I come over to the brand world, the brands want everybody. You know what I'm saying? The brands would like it if almost everybody, you know what I'm saying? If we get the most amount of people paying attention to you as possible. Maybe we came to you for the niche in the beginning, but long term, we want as many eyes as possible. Yeah. What gets as many eyes as possible on all this shit that we're doing, the other side of it? You know what I'm saying? Uh, look, I. no one's going to get everybody, right? Yeah. And a bigger everybody, honestly, like we want to be real with it, is like the white crowd. Yeah. 100%. Right? Because it's just more white people, right? And then these other crowd, the non hood crowd. So that's why so many people get caught up in that rocking a hard place. Oh, yeah, I'm a come, I'm a hood artist, or I'm just coming from the street, or some place that has black authenticity. If you want to go that to that space, and then you start moving in other spaces because I'm trying to increase my market share. Yeah. And I I think we use that sellout argument, right? People sell out, oh, this person's selling out, but people don't quite understand. You know, from a fan standpoint or a consumer standpoint, how limited just your category is, right? Being just a female rap artist, mm-hmm. a male rap artist, and I'm in the street rap category, or I'm in the conscious rap category. People don't understand how limited that market share and that ceiling is, right? So then you move into these other spaces, the other spaces that people consider sell out largely, like we just keep it simple. We just say the white crowd, right? White mm-hmm. commercial. That's what we're, we're calling it. That's bigger. Her doing these things and catering more towards this audience was not going to necessarily increase her white market share, right? Yeah. So, like that corporate market share, like that, she would she could still grow her fan base without catering. And it's not like she doesn't have any black hip hop audience. She had that, right? 
which I felt like the ma the major brand moves that got made or some of the brand moves that got made might have made her cater more towards the part of the black audience that was never going to accept her in that way. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Mm. So it's like it's a losing game. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. go to where you can get some more. That's my that's my problem with, with her situation. I, I see opportunities that got lost. And look, you know, again, it goes back to, to each his own because if you just wanted to do that, you just wanted to do that. Like you just wanted to look a certain way, have make certain type of music. That's besides anything that that matters from my side. I'm just talking about from a strict brand you're a business entity and I'm trying to maximize you yeah. and exploit you as a product, which is the reality of uh, what artists are from that side of things. I feel like she missed out and made herself more comparable to a side of the game that she cannot win in when she had a space that she can win. You know who didn't do that? Doja Cat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Doja Cat had her <laughs> issues and the 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 racist comments and all that whole thing yeah. and she's like hey i need to you know i've grown and i didn't mean that stuff whatever she said all that stuff you know asked for forgiveness but she never let that turn her direction completely yeah. and i'm yeah. going to cater to these people who are never going to accept me anyway because yeah. i made those comments and the ones who weren't going to accept her whether she made those comments or not. Yeah, it's like, y'all niggas didn't like move anyway. You know what I'm saying? Why, what am I, why am I trying to appeal to you? She did. She really was like, yeah. hey, bro, I would love to stick over here with you rappers, but it's pop space is calling my name. Yeah. <laughs> Let me right. go over here. Right. Now, I don't think Sweetie had the ceiling musically that she did. But again, I'm talking about Sweetie's potential as a brand juggernaut was, yeah. was there. Yeah. Like her, she's a, a personality. Her YouTube is done amazingly. She has one of the best artists, if not the best artist YouTube I've seen. She's one of the first artists I've seen doing like a serious funnel. You remember that, uh, what was it, like the Hottie University thing? That yeah. whole funnel I sent you back then, bro? Crazy. Bruh, bruh Crazy. yeah, so, and I, I feel like that's probably could even be more maximized. She, like, she just has a, some really unique opportunities that I feel like she's not taking advantage of. But um, like, with that being said, Vlad, <laughs> <laughs> hey bro if you were going to 10x her sales it would have only been on some fuck shit to probably um, <laughs> that's a wild number to just throw out there but I know fans will hear that stuff and believe it easily mm -hmm. but hey to be fair 10x is 20,000 yeah 20,000 like 10x isn't as difficult a mountain to climb when you're starting from 2,000 versus a yeah. hundred thousand. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So maybe that's why he's so confident. Yeah. You know, maybe that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so much in that conversation of the album sales, bro. It's just, I don't know. It's, the, it's been an interesting week. Yeah. That, Cause it's just, I don't know. One, I feel like she shouldn't have did a surprise rollout. You don't have the, like you were just saying, she, you, don't, you don't have the brand strength to get away with that. Mm -mm. I need to be convinced sometimes to listen, <laughs> listen to your music, right? Yeah. Like, not in a bad way. Like I like Sweetie, but sometimes I need to, I need, I need to, you know, I need to sit with a couple singles before I, I decide to go give up thirty minutes. You know, um, yeah, it's just it's so much, for that, so much for that situation. <laughs> but she had one of the greatest opportunities, not only from all the brand stuff. I felt like that's my best friend. I felt like that was perfect for her audience, mm -hmm. like the audience that she should be focused on. Mm -hmm. That whole track and that whole direction, that whole imagery, every go go feed the woman, feed the woman, and that specific woman the not the the more commercial side so maybe it makes it difficult too when you don't see a space for you kind of like when you talk about brand opportunities not being as lucrative like you look at the old youtubers like dang you know i'm just doing this for fun trying to work in hollywood at some point though mm -hmm. today you got people like why would i go to hollywood because there's so much money on this youtube shit and yeah. they own like now i gotta deal with other people and i could just post a, and be in my room by myself so some of that stuff does like make it harder to like just like thug it out and say, hey, I see this really unique car space. I'm going to really, really like carve it out and spend time there and not go towards these other opportunities. But you got to see it and really know that for yourself. And, you know, maybe no one looked at it that way um, around yeah. her. Yeah, but, saying, but that's how I look at the, the brand stuff right now. Like I, I really do think the – being a brand influencer is, is, has to be more lucrative for her than being a music artist. Like at I, this point, yeah, at 100%. this point. 
And even just thinking back to that that funnel, I, I, I remember because I completely forgot about that. But I mean, that was like 2018. So if we're assuming, I believe she probably racked up at least 100k emails, phone numbers during that time, right? Had four years to nurture them, four years to figure out her, her monetization funnel with them, right? Four years to figure out what products and other shit they like from her. She's probably had one of the best artists to brand influencer flips in the last like. If we exclude Travis Scott, I would say like the last like four or five years. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Since she's been in the game. And so now I just think it's like music is one of those things like you do it to maintain the image of what your core thing is coming in. But all of this is really just an attention flip for all this other back end shit. So yes, my maybe my album only sold 2000, but it created this conversation that got me over a hundred million, maybe a billion plus impressions across everything. Yeah. People are talking about me. Now all this shit is being funneled to my real money maker, which is my merchandising, my my products, my you know convincing McDonald's to give me another sauce or some shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And so then it's like you can't really say she lost in that situation. If you're looking at her from the perspective of a music artist, yes. You know what I'm saying? If you're looking at her from the perspective of a business, no. I don't know. I still <laughs> think she lost. You still I think, think so? I don't think she lost in an absolute fashion. She's losing the, the narrative war. I think she lost her biggest ceiling. She lost her biggest game. Mm. But you, like you, it's it's like it's it's like when I talk about these new artists and we'll be talking to them and they'll get do a million streams or go viral and then they'll like sit back and relax. Yeah. Right? Not realizing that that shit could have did 10 million, 20 million, right? I think she's going to win regardless by like a regular person standard, even a typical career artist standard. I think she's actually going to like she's going to make some money. You like think- she's going to be good money wise. So I don't, yeah. I don't have any issue there. I just think her ceiling could be even higher than it is now. You think her ceiling is much higher as a music artist than as a brand influencer? No, it's not a, a really a music artist like it is none of I, nothing I said was actual song related. Right? It's all more her brand. Okay. I think she's more limited brand wise than she could have been. Okay. Perception, but the narrative from the music and everything all comes together, right? Yeah. So what she represented is something and and could have leaned into representing is something different than what she represents now, which isn't even quite clear anymore. Like what exactly does she represent? You know, we know we got uh Dang, Carisha and what's, what's JT? It? JT, yeah. yeah. Young Miami and, and JT. We know they're a scamming artist, right? The those girls. And then there's gonna be the natural arc of them becoming more mature, but still being where they're from. Mm-hmm. Right. Meg, highly sexual, right? In the lyrics, but she has some bars to lean onto when she wants to. But her problem is still is going to be trying to find from an overall narrative wise, where's where's the other substance? I don't even want to say other substance, but just what does her arc look like? Mm. It's hard to find what her arc looks like. Where do you like. go when you get sick of this? Where do you go when you get sick of this? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like how do we understand you deeper than just like these sex bars and sexual image, right? Um, so that's part of a potential ceiling. She can find a way out. Maybe there's something I don't know about her that she can lean into. The anime stuff is not gonna be her thing. Right, yeah. she's never gonna be fully that right, but she might have something. So I, it's not like that's a beautiful, beautiful thing about branding. Like if you know enough and you can navigate and make but, shit happen yeah. that people can't she, see. She got a whole medical center thing. She said pretty publicly that when she gets closer okay. to the enemy, she wants to Bam. open like medical centers. Yeah, that, so she got like, that. Yeah, stuff like that. Right yeah. there, it is for her. Um, like, like I'm trying to think of one more uh, woman artist. That, where they gonna go because of their brand? That somewhere like you could give it in their camp, right? that level-ish that you consider maybe a peer and then what the evolution out of that space looks like. What is the narrative? But again, like, sweetie, where does she sit? You know where Meg sits right mm-hmm. now. Bump, like, okay, yeah, we know the medical center and things can evolve, but you know where it sits right now. JT and Young Miami, like, we know where they sit and you can even start to see the the, the evolution that's, mm-hmm. that's going to take place. It's going to yep. be natural. Yep. Where does sweetie sit? right now who does she have on lock because who you have even musically and you're representing for that's a representation of who you're going to take into your next space 
right? So that's my problem. Like, there's no clarity in where she sits right now. Yeah, we know where Doja. Let's just put Doja in there. Do, we know where Doja sits. Just a hey, poppity pop. Yeah, you know what I mean. I can rap and all that stuff. She can rap for real. Well, she that said she about to start making German house music, and she has the ability to do that because yeah. she's pop with the a alternative twist, alternative, <laughs> hyper alternative and artistic. Mm-hmm. That's her, where she sits mm-hmm. again. Where does Sweet sit? Man, it's a good question. That's what I'm saying. Like that. That's all. That's all. Um, but but yeah, man. Um. That's one. Now talking about streams and uh, what and, and record. The, now, and now lack gonna, of authenticity. Yeah. Of now, now we're gonna get to that other topic. <laughs> fake streams, fake streams. We know, we know that it's a thing, and it's been a thing for a long time. And recently, some artists were exposed from having fake, fake streams. All right. So let's bring it up. We'll just bring up the academics post. Many of y'all have probably seen videos about this, but I promise you, we're going to add some additional insight, obviously, from what we do, because uh, we're in this for real. So, Atlantic Records is under fire after fans discover blatant view botting and bot comments on their artists' recent music videos. Don Tolliver, Lil Uzi Vert, Roddy Rich, and A Boogie. Let me be clear. Atlantic Records is never going to be under fire from fans. I don't care what you say. Fans can talk that talk like it's, there's there's no real heat coming from fans mm-hmm. for an Atlantic Records, not at all. Like <laughs> this is it's, it's nothing. It's too distant. Some of these indie labels, let's just say, if it was some something was going on with the Migos, Little Baby, and like QC, mm-hmm. they could feel the heat. Yeah. All right. Atlantic Records ain't feeling the heat. Yeah. Right. It's just not. Right. Like matter of fact, they have some of these indie. <laughs> labels in place so they don't have to feel the heat. They don't deal with that, that that stuff on that level. And fans don't under there's no identification of it enough. So yeah. and they about to go on break. They don't care about that. Yeah, and they about to go on break. Let's <laughs> let's, let's for real. It's like getting in trouble the day before Christmas break. Right? You don't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So you got Don, right? Yeah, he had you bots on this um comments. And it's pretty obvious when you look at it. You can see all these comments that are all these emojis. We we know what it looks like. A lot of emojis and fake stuff. You also got like the the foreign comments that becomes a, a thing for people. And the foreign comments could be real foreign comments or they could be fake, right? One way or yeah. another. But I don't understand them enough to know. Right. Yeah. At the very least yeah. you know that this ain't popping in America. So it's either fake or it's uh, hitting somewhere, I yeah, don't, I don't it's, it's hitting somewhere, and they're running <laughs> ads to foreign space to run run up some numbers. Yeah, we know that's a thing now. And and also, you have to look for the overly optimistic comments. That was also a song. When overly optimistic, oh. like overly plus, like this is great, bro. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yo, this yeah. is amazing. Keep it up. It's, it's like, like yeah, it's it's optimistic, <laughs> but it's so basic and yeah. no substance. It's general as hell. Yeah. Amazing, yeah. good stuff. Yeah. Hey, this is fire, man. <laughs> Hey, they don't know about those yet. They don't know about those, right? So, there's a couple things that come from this. Right? A lot of people are surprised. I don't know why. Yeah, I was just about to say, well, why? at this point, bro. Right? And by the way, you know, Don, Don Tolliver, Cactus Jack, there's some people on that Travis Scott video we got talking about his bots blowing up, acting like Travis would never do bots. Why would he ever have to do bots? Travis sold out. Yeah. Beer and tacos. Who is this guy? I don't trust this guy. Mm-hmm. And this guy is nobody. It's like, oh, that's his ex-manager. Well, he's ex-manager for a reason. Well, actually, his ex-manager got rid of Travis. Well, still, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, look, let's keep it clear because people don't get that context with us, but we always talk about it. Let's actually at least say it on one episode. We view bots different than y'all, bro. Yeah, much different. Like, when we talk about somebody having bots, we're not talking about it from a positive or a negative. Ja'Cory in that episode literally said, like, hey, man, look, y'all might want to find somebody on y'all team who can flip (laughs) something like this, right? So it's not like we highly encourage bots for every artist and every every moment in time, and we need to have real. But there is a legitimate part of the game that bots have a function. They help. They they have a function. They have a small piece in the in right the, in the phone in the overall picture. Yes, they they have a piece. <laughs> so let's let's talk more about that because if you're a brand new artist, you're working from ground zero. Many of y'all 
um, have tried to work with us and y'all had bots. Hmm. And we'll be like, nah. All right? Why? Because it makes it hard to see what the marketing is actually doing. What's in effect? You might see your streams going down. Um, no, your followers going down, even though the campaign is gaining you legit followers, but you're still losing all these followers from your old shit, yeah. right? From this yeah. fake stuff that was never real in the first place. So it makes it hard to see. That's why we don't like working with those people. If you can have a manage expectation, we actually will take you and say, all right, you understand because you got this fake shit, it's not going to just pop. It's not going to start moving. I mean, like, some things we can't tell you because we can't see it. Exactly. Yeah. Some things that we can't tell you because the data is muddy. Like, all that, cool. That's a huge reason. Why does it not make sense for artists ground up? Because it's fake and now you literally do that. Create an environment where we can't trust what's going on. You don't know what's real. You don't know how many people are going to show up to your show. You don't know how many people are would sign up for an email or stream your song because all this is fake. That's why bots don't make sense for most of these artists and that's why we, we t- talk about it from that side of it. But the other side of the game, look, man, a lot of times to keep doing business, you got to get creative. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's that's all that's going on. They're getting creative because there's multiple things that they're trying to accomplish. And I can't say for these artists specific situations why they're doing bots on their specific situations. But let's just go through some reasons people do, do bots. And they actually can make sense. Some of them are still like, the toughest situation to be in. Let's talk about one of the toughest to me. Maintaining an image that's outscaled the actual fan base and performance of the music, right? Yeah. So earlier, you talked about Sweetie. You just said Sweetie still doing the music to kind of like keep that thing moving and then flip it into everything else. And that'd be the sole reason she might do it going mm-hmm. forward. Well, that goes to the LeBron analogy I used, right? I know I need a win in this category. I need. I keep playing because basketball is my main thing. Keep the main thing the main thing. But while I'm in this main thing, a part of my brand is being that nigga. Yeah. So I got to stay that nigga or close to that nigga. I got to at least be one of the niggas. <laughs> <laughs> like, if I want to keep leveraging, yeah. you know, yeah. my brand the same outside of this space, and if it gets too too rough, I need to just like flip fully and move on. Right. That analogy plays on a lot of these artists. If I'm on this level, part of my level is being a level seven artist instead of a level two. I'm popped. I'm official. You know, I have buzz. I need to maintain as much of an image on this level as possible while the music catches up. I know this is a problem. These teams that have that issue, they know it's an issue. Yeah. Right. And I need to figure out how to maintain as much of this image as possible until the music catches up in, in reality. Right, it's like that gateway drug type shit, man. It's like I was, or it's like the this the stripper. I'm only doing it to get through college, you know what I mean? Like, hey, I'm only doing this shit till I get a real fan base. Like, I'm just trying to do it. Like, you know, this year I'm doing seventy percent bots. Next year I'm doing fifty percent bots. Next year I'm doing twenty percent bots. Oh shit, I got a real fan base. You know, that's a legit thing, right? Some people are in a set scenario where they're trying to figure it out that way. Yeah, right, because the brand hit of barely having any streams is too det- detrimental. Right? That's one scenario. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's a tough position a, to be in. That's the hardest one to be in, for that, sure. That's yeah. legitimately, that's the hardest, that's the hardest yeah. one to be in. It's, a lose, it's usually a lose-lose. You get found out, you lose. If you don't yep. do it and shit don't go the same, you lose. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And my problem, my biggest problem in that scenario is you're still – in a spot where you don't have the fan base that you require for where you are and the energy spent on bots takes away from the energy that can be spent on finding out the right solution. And I know we don't think that, right? As humans, we feel like we could do all these different things, but there's that switching cost and that lack of creativity that gets taken away because you know you have your out, Mm -hmm. right? We're going to have these bots versus forcing ourselves to maybe figure out how we can flip the narrative and maybe just come out with the fact that it's not like where we want it to be. I'm not saying to do that. Like that's not a straight advice. I'm just saying a different angle, right? Or we need to run 10 more shows than we usually would and really tour the hell out of the the, the country. Or we need to figure out how to get our artists in these different positions and collabs or get them in these YouTuber videos or whatever, right? It keeps you from being creative 
or limit some of your creativity when you have bots a part of it. Again, this is still me not saying don't do them at all, but that's why sometimes I even like, especially when it comes to creative stuff, I like to have someone's fully focused on that. It's like, all right, maybe I got to work on these two things or you got to work on these two things. But then we have one person who's like, hey, bro, all you need to do is be focused on how can we creatively solve this problem. Right. And and you you run the risk of getting lost in your lost in the sauce. Lost in your that's lost what I'm saying. You have to have somebody yeah. who's dedicated to working on the real thing yeah. only, and that's their only focus. Yeah. Because if you have that and you gotta hold them to that standard. It's like, yeah, I know I'm doing what I'm doing, bro, but I'm not supposed to be still doing this. <laughs> you gotta find a way up out of this thing to get us out out this game. You know, yeah. I'm just fighting yeah. off, you know, some of these these villains. But bro, we got we gotta open the fucking uh the door <laughs> to yeah. get out this out this building. So there's that. The another scenario, which is why this bot thing isn't gonna go away. And it's not about y'all. Fans always man, man, fans are so they so self-centered, bro. It's not even always about y'all. They're not trying to fool you at all times. Sometimes they're trying to fool other industry people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the biggest one. It's bro. like, That's dog, bro. One. I need my label to see these numbers. So if you re- if you a real fan, you would actually support me getting these bots because <laughs> if I get this amount of streams, my label's gonna give me the rest of this budget, and now I can do some more marketing. <laughs> like sometimes it's about shit like that. I gotta yeah. hit milestones. I gotta unlock the rest of my budget, and I can't unless I hit this number in a specific period of time. Or I'm trying to get on a um like a Grammy or like you know improve my case for something. Yeah. Or corporate appeal like so it's not even industry but i'm just trying to make sure that i have this amount of streams so then when i talk to this guy who doesn't know shit about the industry and music and doesn't understand my fan base if i can at least compare my streams and explain myself using some artist that he knows right i can say oh yeah well here's an idea like i remember talking to a guy about black right matter of fact we had a client that was big as fuck themselves or whatever that he knew because he was older, uh, he knew Macy. Okay, and he knows so Macy Gray, and he knew her because he was he was in his forties, but he wasn't a super music head, like not at all, not even close. And but he knew Macy because Macy was Macy back in that day, and he was younger then too. And then I was talk, telling him about Black. It was just a conversation or whatever. And I was like, oh, I saw Black say that he was interested in crypto or something like that, or figuring out the NFT or metaverse space in his, in his own way. And he was like, who's that? Well, I was like, black streaming wise is bigger. I had to use that type of a comparison so he could understand how mm-hmm. like significant he was. Now, granted, Macy's streaming numbers, again, are her real numbers are pre-streaming ever existed. Mm-hmm. But still, him not knowing much, I knew that that would do the job, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> So sometimes it's shit like that that these conversations are happening for, and I gotta tweak my streaming for that type of stuff. Yeah, it's so many scenarios, and fans always think it's them. Oh, we're trying to fool them or increase our. It's not about y'all all the time. Like, just to keep it real. So maybe you should find out why. Hey, maybe look, maybe some of the artists when we put it on y'all, like, hey, educate y'all fans. Like, hey, bro, we about to do these streaming things now. If you don't want me to have to do these streaming bots. You need to stream my shit three more times. Or matter of fact, we're gonna do it both because this is our goal. I need y'all to help me <laughs> help yeah. me help me get there. We're gonna bot it, we gonna we gonna triple play it, and y'all only play 30 seconds of it, but you're gonna do that shit. Like maybe it's something like that, right? It'll be yeah. funny if an artist did something like that. But that the bot situation is far more complex than people actually give it credit for. Um, which is why we ain't out here like, oh, someone got bots. Like, we exposing them. We about to do that in the title because y'all motherfuckers only click on shit like that. But <laughs> that just is what it is. Yeah, bro. I, I think you said something important earlier, too, about, like, where in the artist's journey do they do it, right? And so it, it, I think what artists have to understand is that the bigger you start to become, it becomes more of a battle of perception than, than real fan base building, right? Yep. So, like, someone like Uzi, Uzi isn't trying to make new fans, you know what I'm saying? Like, probably 80 to 90% of rap fans knows who he is or know who he right. is. Now he's playing a game of perception. You know yep. I exist. Let me wow you with these numbers. So if you didn't go check me out because of whatever reason, now you now you want to kind of fall in line, right? Yep. Building a cheat mentality. Like, that's the that's the bandwagon effect, right? Like, like music snowballs. The more you can make people feel like they're missing out because it looks like other people are enjoying this, the more yep. people want to join in on it. 
So there's that aspect of it. And, you know, going back to the beginner artist, it's like the bots don't, don't make sense to you because nobody cares about your perception. Like, you know, and so it's like, who are you bragging to? There's no real people that you're bragging to these things about. But the other thing I was going to say, too, is that, bro, at this point, numbers and even the bot conversation to a degree are all a part of the market <laughs> rollout. You know what I'm saying? So it's, yep. like I said, those milestones, hey, we need to hit 10 million views by this date because the day after that, we want to put a, a, a marketing budget or PR, uh, some PR around the narrative that X artists hit 10 million views in, in, um, in two weeks. There was like, I think it was like, one of those videos you've seen, the, the Blackie Speaks, the, the Bob Lamb video, he yes. talked about 6 9 was doing it, right? Like 6 9 well, it wasn't with bots. He was talking about with YouTube ads, but still, it, it falls in the same conversation. We, he needed to run these numbers up within a certain time frame so the narrative could be, hey, I ran these numbers up in this time frame, right? Oh, I got 10 million views in 24 hours. Or I hit 100 million streams in a week, right? Like, just, that becomes a part of the marketing. Yep. And like I said, sometimes I think now even the bot conversation is a part of the marketing because the only genre that really, or the only genre of fans that really seem to care about botting is rap fans. If you pay attention to that, when the conversation about bots, Justin Bieber, for example, there was a conversation about bots around, maybe not the last time, but one of them, but those, his fans did not give a fuck, bro. Not they, at did, all. they did not care. When the conversation about bots comes up around rap artists, bro, the whole community loses this shit. Bro, right? hip hop fans are <laughs> the most critical, most fickle, most fickle. The financial potential is more limited in a lot of ways. Hip hop is a. It's a tougher genre. Hundred percent. Yeah. It's, it's it's tougher genres, not just because of all the the business of it, but literally the fans themselves. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, it's like I can't even cheat like the other artists because y'all won't let me get away with it. Like their fans will let yeah. them get away with it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like Justin Bieber out here. There was one point, bro. I remember uh, me and my my homie Sam. We were looking at because he had brought it to me. He was like, "Bro, look at Justin Bieber's top streaming cities." And there was one country. I can't remember what country it was. I remember if it was like Jakarta or some. Some like uh like small country, and it was like Justin Bieber streams from that country were equivalent to like if every person in that country streams like a hundred times or a thousand times or something. Like every person in the country is like bro. nobody's batting the eye, bro. You know what I'm saying? Nobody, nobody. bats the eye. Don Tolliver gets six smiley faces in a row. <laughs> that shit, that shit news by the end of the day. <laughs> you know Yo, saying? bro, it's crazy, man. Because <laughs> hip hop has there's no other genre I think that has the level of demand for brand music to life congruency yeah. that hip hop has. Yeah. yeah, that type of authenticity. It has to be, you have to represent what you actually talk about in that way. Everybody else gets to be an artist. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of part of the difficulty of this whole uh, situation where they're like, yo, let our hip protect hip hop mm -hmm. and, and black music when they're saying, you know, don't use our, this shit in our court case. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, a tougher conversation than many want to actually acknowledge, but like that wouldn't be so if we didn't demand so much authenticity or people to speak in certain ways. So yeah, like hip hop definitely has it tough. And kind of like how you mentioned, um, sort of the Baba Lamb video, he talked about what was the thing he said? Artists knew. Oh, uh, he said if artists knew they would stop. That was one thing. He was oh, like, yeah. I wonder if Don Tyler knows. And I, I fucked with uh. First of all, I, I only discovered them recently, you know, like maybe like the last week or whatever. So I oh, Bobble Lamb? Yeah, so okay. I, I fuck with your videos, but yeah, um, Bobble Lamb for, uh, for real. But if you want artists to win, I mean, if artists knew, right, they would. They, do you agree with that? Let me just, uh, let me see that. It depends on the caliber of artists. Like, okay. th there's a certain subsection of artists I think would care. Um, we work with artists that care, you know what I'm saying? They they they're super anal about yo. It's a bot. You know what I'm saying it's a bot. So is this what's going on? No, nah, it's not. Look at the look at the numbers. Right. What level do those artists tend to be at? If we consider ten to be, let's say top of the mainstream, Drake. Let's say eight be bottom of mainstream. I don't know, give you on or something. I think artists between a one and five really care about it. Exactly. <laughs> And that's when you should care about it yeah. anyway. Because like, you're trying to build something real. Yeah, exactly. Like the, yeah, earlier, it's like the focus at that stage should be about real fan engagement and yep. making sure that there are people that when if you do decide to stack fake engagement on top of it, there are real people vouching for you. Exactly. <laughs> that that's that's what it is. It becomes yeah. your defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. It's that insurance at so the it's bottom can't, of it. Real people fake. gonna show up to shows, you actually can make your money, da da da. Mm -hmm. That's that's cool. Real people make the fake stuff look believable. You know what I'm saying? It's like when there's a fan in the comments saying, nah, he didn't buy streams. I listen to this shit a hundred times a day. That makes someone that doesn't really understand the situation go like, well, maybe this is some bullshit, right? Or like you said, 
if the conversation online is, yo, Don Tolliver bought it all his views on this video, and then the next day Don Tolliver posts a video of a sold out show and you can see real people in the crowd, it completely changes the narrative. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like it makes it either less believable to people who aren't really paying attention to it that deep anyway. Or people go like the Travis Scott video, right? Like we literally, you can go to that video and look at the comments. What are people saying? Hey, it doesn't matter because he's selling out shows, he's selling merch, he makes great music. Those are the things that artists have to always remember, bro. Fans care when that shit is trash or it doesn't look like it's providing any real world yep. benefits. Because at that point, it's like, why are you doing this? This shit clearly isn't working for you. When all of the other dots connect, Nobody cares. That's why nobody complains about Justin Bieber doing it. Yep. I mean, he was a great artist. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't care. Just bought it up, bro. Just keep putting out good music. <laughs> exactly. Right? Same with Uzi. People saying, oh, like the I Want a Rock song. That shit's a hit. Nobody cares because yeah. everybody likes the song. You know what I'm saying? Yep. People only care when the other elements of the artistry are subpar to trash. Mm hmm. If now everything feel else, like you're you're trying to trick them or whatever into liking right? it, yeah, exactly. Even if you, I mean, you're always trying to trick them. That's just this entertainment business. Yeah. Entertainment, the show business, that show, not the in front of the curtains is all tricks, yeah. right? Lights, camera, action, effects, but people don't want to feel it. Yeah, yeah, bro. It's like we, we for whatever reason, we we just we just want to see it. We don't want to feel like we're a part of whatever you're doing to kind of drive us out. We just want to see the end results of it, right? right? Meet you at the finish line, type of thing. Lie to me, but don't. Let, don't let me know that you're lying to me. <laughs> yeah, bro. Keep it a secret. <laughs> Put your phone on D and D. <laughs> but so so that just becomes like the, the the weird conversation around the whole bot thing is, I, or at least to me is, it's more of a conversation of who is allowed to get away with it. Yeah. Where, and like I said, you between a one and a five, you are not allowed to get away with it. Don't even attempt to get away with it because people like us are gonna find out. Like I can, I can, at this point, bro, it's, it's not hard to spot bots, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Especially the smaller you are, the easier it is to tell if you're using bots or some type of artificial inflation tool, software thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then, like you said, shows are the great equalizer. But if I pull up, I was at, I remember going to this one event, this is this had to be pre-pandemic, it was for an artist that had just got signed to a label, and they were like a new signee. You know how like labels that have the whole like, Yo, come like watch my artists perform and all the industry people come out. But it was supposed to be like a mixed bag one. So it's gonna be industry thing and then like fan fans were supposed to be allowed. Yeah. I remember the artists at the time had like two, three million streams. I mean monthly listeners, a couple million streams, pull up to the show, nothing but industry people, no real fans. First I thought it was an industry thing. I'm like and somebody was like, no, nah, there's like a couple fans are here. Like you start seeing people, a couple maybe like four or five people, you know, at the stage fucking with them and shit. But nothing real came from it, bro. And it's like, yo, that artist is at a stage where, because now now I'm in the venue going back and looking up the numbers. Like, man, is this right, bro? You know what I'm saying? You can look at her Spotify again. Nope, they're right there, 2.3 million monthly listeners. Now they go to Instagram, 400K, whatever it was. So I'm like, now, now marketing brand kicks in, and I'm like, nah, I need to do some deep dive because this shit got to be fake. Start going through my resources and tool bags to figure that out. Start seeing fake followers, start seeing, you know, yeah. certain playlists on it. <laughs> And I remember walking into my friend that invited me to it, and I was like, bro, like they're already fucking up. Like, like this artist ain't even been in the game long. They're already fucking up. She's like, what you mean? Like, fake, 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 fake. 30 people here and 28 of them are industry people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and those other two are probably plus ones. Yeah, yeah. And even to Atlantic Records defense, I I don't I wonder if they're botting the smaller artists the same way they're botting. Because, I mean, the headlines that have come up are Uzi. Don Tolliver, right, right. Yeah. Artists where it will be believable if, yeah. to people that don't care that much. Playing it are they game. are they botting up the artists that they just signed last week? Hopefully not. If they smart, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But probably. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, there was another um take that I wanted to address though. Baba Lam had talked about the uh YouTube ads. Right. And how it's more uh, believable to do yeah. that on YouTube. It's, it is easier to do that on YouTube because yeah. like he like he mentioned, all right, and, and we've seen people do. You can get those streams pretty easily by throwing some money behind it. And then you get the comments. You're actually making those streams more believable. That's the funny thing about it. Mm. Right. If you just run ads, people don't believe it. Because it looks fake to people, mm -hmm. which artists co co complain about all the time, like early on, especially when we first start running YouTube ads. It's like, yeah. oh man, the proportions, they don't, they look all, off out of whack. So then you get some co fake comments that actually looks more believable, funny enough, 
it's just that these fake comments are just so violating yeah. bad. That's the issue. And yeah. y'all didn't do anything to labels but make them say, hey, bro, we got to get better tech. Yeah. Like, to do it better, it's not going to stop the train. Y'all right? start going to Fiverr for our box. Hey, exactly. <laughs> Find us a, a sweatshop <laughs> somewhere and people to just comment for real, which there is a site. I remember I was trying to remember it before the pod. So, But no, that there is a site out there that you can actually get real people to make comments. Yeah, you can pay them like a couple cents. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, I can't think of that. It's in my notes somewhere. I, I'll figure it out and you bring it up on another episode or something. But and because we we've, we've been able to at least defend ourselves against the YouTube thing by breaking down the numbers of what it looks like for YouTube engagement for ads, right? Normal engagement, viral engagement. And I know like with us, typically we we use like the view ratio to tell right. So it's get the the formula divide the likes by the amount of views you got. Whatever that percentage is, that's your like the view engagement. So what we would always see is like if it's between one and three percent, they're probably running ads on it. Yep. If it's between like let's say that four to like seven percent. That's about typical engagement for someone that's not marketing their music whatsoever. Like ten percent or higher is like that's just going like viral or right or it's having some type of a moment, whether because of the marketing or something else is kind of happening outside of it. Right. So looking at Don Tolliver's video, if you go do the math on his, he's at like one point three percent. So probably running youtube ads they're just bot comment they're just coming buying the comments pretty much right like you said to 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 keep up with the perception that is coming from this this ad yeah it's gonna look crazy that you got 10 million views and four thousand comments <laughs> <laughs> we know it's real yeah you know it's real right because don talver at this level probably understands that type of stuff to some degree i would i would think you know yeah. So you know it's real. I know it's real. Everybody that works in the industry probably has an idea of where it's coming from and knows it's real. But you know who doesn't know shit about that shit? The fucking fans, bro. They don't know the shit. The fans bro. don't know shit, bro. And they're going to look at you and go like, damn, Dunn Tolliver got 10 million views and 4,000 comments. Mm-hmm. This motherfucker falling off. Yeah. Fuck him. Now I'm going to listen to Yeet. You know what I'm saying? Like, Because Yeet shit's real and it's whatever, bro. And it's like, like we say, at that level perception and narratives are more dangerous than almost anything bro yeah. like, like like once that snowball gets going bro it's a hard thing to stop you know what i'm saying to try to mm-hmm. get behind and stop so it's like labels looking like hey before we even give fans the chance you're gonna bot this shit up you know what i'm saying yeah. um and i think dunn tyler's probably in rollout mode bro so they, they definitely don't want that narrative right now uzi's in you know what i'm saying i got a hit moving mode right makes yep. sense yep. roddy rich just dropped the album i'm in the album release mode right yep. or, or Post release mode, right? So they're doing it in situations where I can understand why they're doing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it, it, if they were, if it was just like some random one off release from any of them, and you know what I'm saying? It's like, why, like, why not just see where the marketplace is at for them right now? But like, they're all in in position to push things that could lead to other bigger things, for them. or or it's big for them. So I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we have to protect the narrative around the artists. We have to protect their reputation to their fan base, who are like you said already fickle as fuck and. Fickle don't understand shit and love the, to push a negative narrative. That's the sad thing about the rap the rap fan base. You know what I'm saying? That's that's their bread and butter. That's the Why would I put my investment through that? You wouldn't, because <laughs> you gotta protect the investment, man. <laughs> no way in hell, man. So that's that actually makes me think about uh, one thing. Blackie speaks said. Shout out to Blackie. You know you my guy. Um, he said, if you want your artists to win, you wouldn't engage in those fraudulent tactics or any fraudulent tactics. And to that, I have to say, it depends on what you mean by fraudulent. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, cause there's a perception difference between somebody who's like a fan and somebody who's actually in the industry moving and they understand all the pieces. I don't know. Do you remember... It wasn't Deflate Gate. What was the Spy Gate? You remember Spy Gate? Mm. The so that's the New England Patriots. There was this big thing that oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, they were yeah. recording people's yeah. signals and and figuring out what the play was about to be called, right? Yeah. So people came down on them real hard, really ruined the reputation of them, and people always, whenever they win, like to point to some potential cheating because of it, right? But Tony Dungy known around the nfl as like the sweetest guy a coach but never like raise his voice you know like in football like that's one of them sports where people yeah. cursing and da 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 now super christian never raising his voice got a championship with Pey- Peyton Manning. he even came out and said look man everybody doing something they just got caught yeah 
right? <laughs> Everybody doing something, they just got caught. And some people even say, like, if you don't bend the rules, you don't want to win, right? Now, and <laughs> that's just the reality of the game in music. Mm -hmm. Now, again, what do you mean by bending the rules? Who is going too far? Are we bending or are we breaking? Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah, we grow up hearing, don't break the rules. But if you're bending them, you probably win it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because that's when we look back at the, all the merch shit. Fans, everybody's very aware of the merch game and how people have created bundles and use. Look, that actually is a rule. And I'm actually using the rules. I'm bending the perception of it because it was meant to, to state one thing. But, hey, part of the interpretation says I could do that. Mm hmm why not do that if it's going to put me in a, in a better position? So, you know, I think it's a lot grayer than people give credit for. And when it comes to the reality of how artists have to, to move to win. But, but yeah, you know, look, quote unquote, fraudulent tactics or tricky, clever tactics is just a part of what it takes, especially at that, at that level in particular. Yeah. What did uh, Sarker used to call it? Black hat marketing? <laughs> something like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like how marketing yeah uh -huh. it's like and, and, like to go back to it, it's like we're not for or against like we don't do stuff like that you know what i'm saying like, all of our market we don't use bots by the way why does why does the bad shit always have to be black you know what i'm saying <laughs> no nah, i feel it why i feel it bro black? why gotta be a black hat uh, like black hat hacker and that, he, he got it from hacking right and, okay, black, okay. and black hat and white hat and the white hat are the good hackers i'm like why we all do the bad shit <laughs> 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 so another conversation <laughs> but, but it's like you know we don't do it yeah i know marketers that do mm -hmm. marketers that's a part of their thing you know what i'm saying um we don't do it because it, it goes against our philosophy it's not a part of where we want to fit into the artist building infrastructure right because we're we're usually more focused on zero to seven you know what i'm saying so yeah. zero to seven is like no we're not we're not doing that shit you're gonna yep. fuck you gonna fuck me up you know what i'm saying yep. doing that shit but I do understand. I do get it. Like I, I just yeah. that is what always gets me about this conversation. Is like you got to understand the context of when it's being done. If it makes sense, if it didn't make sense, yeah, you're right. Like I said, if anybody from a zero to like a six, maybe seven, really zero to five, or maybe six or seven did it, you'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Stop. You you you're hurting yourself for longevity. But if you already at a ten or a nine, and you know you've been building your fan base for years, and you already you already know you have a fan base, it might not be as massive as people think it is, but you know it's twenty, thirty, fifty, hundred thousand people out there that fuck with you. Like I said, now it becomes a battle of perception. You are more than likely not playing the game of new fans. You're playing the game of perception. Hell yeah, and yeah. That brings me to Baba Lamb also said, "Is it profitable to use bots?" All right. You're doing all of these fake streams. Are you actually going to get the return of your money? Because I paid $2,000 for bots to get 200,000 streams. That 200,000 streams ain't going to give me $2,000. Yeah. All right. Is it profitable to do use bots as a music artist? Maybe. <laughs> if you ask in that question, you should not be using bots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I say to that. Right, because it's not about that direct ROI yeah. at all. You're not looking to get your money back from streams, yeah. and you're looking. We talk about the brand perception, right? And that flip, oh, it might get me this 50k commercial. Mm -hmm. It might give me this 100k commercial, right? There's all these other things that bots are using for are used for, and the people who are using bots at the level that are supposed to be using bots. they're not trying to make stream return from yeah. their bots. It yeah. just doesn't, that's not the game. Now, are there windows of opportunity where you can profitably use bots at the beginning or at least use bots in a way that makes sense at the beginning of your career? There's there's space and places, but those are rare. It's not a general um, advice that we would give to anybody. Yeah, nobody. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right, you know, but if I see it, if I log in your artist for Spotify, and I happen to know it's man, I turn a blind eye. Like, yeah, as long yeah. as you ain't tripping on me about it, because I do think about that one artist we had like a long time ago, the one that we about to fire that, that beat us to it. You know Ooh. <laughs> yeah. But like, <laughs> but for those of y'all listening, we had this artist we were working with, and they were faking the hell out of his streams, bro. It was crazy. Like mm -hmm. there was one day where I remember they forgot to, I guess they forgot to re up on whatever they read up on. That shit just tanked and then it just shot back up like two days later, right? Yep. And I was remembering the conversation, I'm like, yeah, like, why isn't this moving like this? 
we're an artist that's doing 20,000 streams a day. And it's like, did you forget who you were talking to? No, you're not. We see the numbers, bro. And that goes back to what I was saying about not getting lost in the sauce of the bot traffic, which is why yeah. I also think small artists shouldn't do it. Not even because they're not playing the game. Well, I think if you're probably like a three to five, you, you're starting to get into playing the game of perception, right? Like you're yeah. zero to two, you're not, nobody cares. Three to five, people starting to care. It's not even about that part. It's more about you start to believe the bot traffic yeah. too much, but you start psychologically talking to me crazy because you getting fifty thousand streams a day, forgetting that you just paid a motherfucker for forty thousand of them. You know what I'm saying? Like a couple of days ago, it's like, hey man. So that campaign taught me a lot when when he said that shit. Well, or whoever said that to us said that, bro. I was like, nah, they fucking with me right now. This ain't yeah. real. This ain't a real conversation. Like, yeah, they don't believe this. Yeah, and it sucks because I like this PR lady. She was so. And she was well connected. Um, actually managed a, a, a our legit artist on one end, um, who's like a legend in his niche. But at the same time, when people get in the bots, man, they 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 get lost in the sauce so much. They, like you said, they they forget the position that they're talking from. Mm -hmm. It's like I told you that we are going to have to build some real stuff. We only do the real stuff. We don't do the bots. Mm -hmm. All right. And if we did bots, we would let you know this is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. There's a real business in that. Like mm -hmm. it's not like a hey, look. At some point, I'm not even saying I'm gonna never create a bot farm myself. You know what I mean? Like we might do that, but then the clients would just know that. Yeah, right. You know I what I mean? I struggle with that every year. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know you do because you be like you be bringing it up. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just about manage expectations. <laughs> hey, we're working on the real stuff right now. That's this is what it's look, it looks like, and this is the expectations that should come with it. Mm -hmm. If we're doing the bot things, we will be doing bots with the clients who understand that game and that I wouldn't be doing bots with an artist who's working ground up and now they're going to be like mad. Like, oh, what happened? And no, we're very clear expectations. You know what this bot thing does? Hey, we got you so you can hit your numbers. Bet. We don't do bots. So don't expect that shit to pop cool. Bet, right? That's mm -hmm. two separate conversations. So <sighs> people get lost in where they are in that, in that equation at the time. And then... The part that I hate is when they look at the people who are giving them bots as people who are doing a better job. That's what they what, what would get me is like, oh, I'm gonna go back to them because when when I was with him, my my numbers were popping. I got fifty thousand streams for four hours. Yeah, yeah, but don't bring them expectations, bro. Like yeah. over here, you, you know that we're doing something different. Yeah. So, you know that yeah those that that is what it is. That was definitely our our greatest situation. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Like that. Uh, that should taught me a lot. You know, you know there, were, there were some other full pause that happened in that window. So, yeah. you know, it, it, it all it broke even. And I think, like, something we never talked about in the podcast, but I think everyone should look into. I don't remember the guy's name, but there was a guy, I think it was during the pandemic, that got caught up for having the streaming farm. And, like, yeah. Billboard made a whole deal about it. Uh huh. His business started booming like fuck after that, bro. Yeah. Which also was a learning moment for me. Cause that was back when I was on it. Oh, bots are bad. You know what I'm saying? Yep, but I know you good, right? But that taught me so much. Cause I was like, oh, he probably lost let's say 60, 70% of maybe his small artists, people that were thinking about, which he probably wasn't going for anyway, right? Yep. Every industry artist that was looking for that. Oh, for real? He has an infrastructure to do this. He's yep. he's, he's doing it for this artist and this. Oh yeah, let me get in on that. So that makes me think, bro. Like, if you got bots and you're doing bots and you're wasting your time just scamming like young, uh, like upcoming artists, you think you're scamming these up and coming artists. You are scamming yourself. Yeah. Because there is real money <laughs> <laughs> for people who do bots. It's one thing. So this is how the person who is like, hey, I'm in scamming mentality. I'm just gonna have bots. This is how your life should be set up if you are just trying to maximize all sides of it. I go out for the industry. I have this front end presence though. So I might get some inbound business and in requests from artists who are on to come up who really probably shouldn't be doing bots. Mm -hmm. And I take that business because it comes to me. But I'm not out here heavily trying to go at that audience. I don't even care about that audience. Really, I'm trying to go to the industry mm -hmm. because that's where the real money is. And I can build the relationships and I can deliver every single time. Mm -hmm. You know, my whole thing and struggle that comes from like certain types of marketing is just like you can't guarantee it. Yeah. Right. And yeah. you. Real marketing, you, know, you cannot guarantee in music. But bots, I can guarantee you these streams, and that's my favorite type of product. Oh, I just gotta push the button, one hundred percent customer satisfaction every time. Yeah. So if you got a bot farm, man, you are wasting 
if you are just hitting up these <laughs> these young kids who don't know any better, go get the real money and then let some of those other, you know, people want to come up, come in as they may. Yeah, but I bet y'all didn't wake up today expecting to get uh, consultative business advice for bot farms. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't that ain't on the internet, bro. And I don't think anyone's ever talked about it from that perspective. How to do a yeah. bot farm? <laughs> yeah, bro. Hey. Well, not how to do it. How to do it smart? I think. Oh, how to I do? Think. Hey, how to do it smart? How to, how to pick your yeah. target audience for your product? Yeah. Because yeah, man, that that just be the biggest thing I think people can take with them. But like, once you hit a certain level, everybody doing it. So yeah. it, it only becomes shocking until you hit that point. I've had conversations with people before. Where like, like I said, back 2020, 2019, early marker, Corey. Like, I was very against bots, you know what I'm saying? Because I didn't understand where they fit in the funnel. And I always remember this conversation I had with this uh, pretty successful label owner. I don't want to say his name, but it's pretty su- successful label owner here. And he's asking me about doing, like, playlisting for one of the artists. I'm talking about like how, like, yeah, we don't believe in it because it's, it's bots in there and blah, 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 and blah, blah. Right? And I could hear in his voice that he did not give a fuck. Like, yo, all this, you know, holier than thou you know what I'm saying? I'm for the people and for the real bullshit. We're not looking for that, bro. We looking, we looking for this other shit. Do you have this other shit or not? Hey. No, nah, we don't. All right, well, we're not working with y'all. Damn. You know what I'm saying? What, like, you, what you're telling me is you can't give me the guarantee that I need. Exactly. Exactly. So you saying, if I give you this, you don't know what's going to happen. No. Nah. Nah, I don't fuck with that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I already got a real fans. I don't need real fans. Mm-hmm. I need bots, bro. Yeah. I need numbers, not people. I need numbers, nigga. <laughs> like that's that's what it is. Yeah. That's exactly what it is, man. So look, yeah, we're gonna we probably gonna have to do a bot farm one day, man. Then just tell y'all about it. <laughs> I've, I've been wanting to do that, actually, yeah. bro. I want to do a YouTube video where we start a bot a bot farm and document the whole process. Yep, that shit will probably yep. go. Won't we, look. No, I'm talking about like do it, do it. Do it. Oh yeah, no, 100. Like, hey, <laughs> we got a bot farm. This is what we do. We ain't gonna tell you about any of our clients. This shit, that part is ironclad. Y'all wouldn't know nothing about none of the, the, the clients. But oh yeah, we got them. Mm-hmm. All those <laughs> clients are super confident. We don't even bragging about them on the case yep, studies. No, don't even brag them. about them. You don't even <laughs> see case studies. You don't even <laughs> see any remote connection to it. But because again, this is the reality, and it's it's the funniest thing about. It says just how people think um, from their own perspective. It's like, oh man, exposing this bot farm, right? And it's like, no, nah, that's marketing for the people who actually want it. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that's marketing. You think, oh man, good for them. They got taken down. It's like, now nah, I'm glad they're being exposed. No, not being exposed. They're being exposed to the people who are right for them. Mm-hmm. That's what, what's happening. It's not an expose like you think. And Honestly, this always, I say this again and again and again, artists, a lot of times, we're not talking about the scamming people that are like that. That's, that's one thing, right? And who don't have their business set up in the right way. Um, a lot of times, y'all will make comments about people's business and it'll only, I, the only thing it does is and identify you as somebody who's not qualified for that business. Mm-hmm. It's like when I've seen comments before, people be like, oh man, you know, these people are too expensive, you know? And it, some of, we've had that comment about mm-hmm. our stuff before. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, that shit costs 3K or whatever, or, or 1,500 or whatever. Like, they'll just thought whatever number we were at the time. And then they'll think they'll be warning other people. It's like, bro, you've never done business with us. Mm-hmm. And based on your comment, you don't have the money, which means you are not a customer. So I'm glad that our funnel did exactly what it's mm-hmm. supposed to do. Like, we built the funnel to... <laughs> to <push> repel <laughs> people like you and you know price is one thing there's but there's so many parts of the funnel and mm-hmm. so many aspects that you build out to repel the people so a lot of times look i'm on the internet and something don't hit i'm like hey it must not be for me mm-hmm. i'm not like judging and saying you know it's one thing for a, between a clear scam and a yo i'm not the customer yeah I'm like, oh shit that car costs that much money or that like these people are paying Twenty dollars for a bottle of water is like, hey, maybe it's not for me. You know what I mean? Because people are buying and they successful. <laughs> somebody keeping this ad running. Hey, somebody keeping this. <laughs> hey, somebody keeping this ad running and it keeps running. It keeps running. So that money must be coming in. So you know, and I think that from a marketer standpoint, especially, you kind of have to think like that. Yeah, yeah. Like just see beyond yourself. That's what I love about it, actually. And if you're bad at marketing, you probably can't see beyond yourself. Yeah. The best you can do in a marketing aspect 
if you are like completely self-centered and can't be aware of these smaller elements is self-promotion like if you're somebody who can like talk and like just like that that self-promotion you can be really good at that without understanding marketing for mm-hmm. real for real yeah all right but that's about it you, you can't especially if you have to do it for somebody else right mm-hmm. you're not going to be able to connect those dots the same yeah because everybody doesn't have your own talent and in, in, in that way of doing things but um yeah man i i, I think you're right and i don't think i'm I, I, no one expected a bot for our consultation. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely expect to go that direction. But hey, what, there it was, and here we are. I think we know we, we got we got these meetings today. So let's go ahead and end it out right here. Tuesdays, Thursdays, no labels necessary. We here. If you haven't liked, if you haven't commented yet, please like and comment under the video. Show us the love. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Every bit of it helps, and that's going to keep us doing it. Y'all don't want us to stop? Keep on subscribing and liking and commenting. With that said, this is... Oh, well, actually, I reversed it. I'm Sean. I'm Corey. And we out. This is No Labels Necessary. Peace.